Hey, I'm Will. This is Luke, BridgeWorksGames.com. Make sure to smash that subscribe button, hit the like button, s ring the, the like button. Uh, Luke and I, we are working on a tank shooter type game. Mm -hmm. And like a bullet hell. And right now we've got the tank. It's moving, it jumps, it shoots. There's enemy towers, the enemy towers shoot back. And when they do hit us, we explode. That was the last thing we did. And now we're going to have our camera pan slowly, uh, totally independent of the tank. So the, the camera's just gonna move. And the tank's responsible for being inside of the little sandbox that we create. And when I say sandbox, it's basically the borders where the tank can't accidentally go outside of the frame of the camera. So we're gonna lock it in and then we're going to move the lock, the walls, and the uh, and and the tank. We're gonna move the the walls and the tank together, and they'll pan with the camera. Cool. What do you think? You want to do it? Yeah. Let's do it. So. I'm done. I'm just done. I swear that should not be a setting. No, it should be default. Yeah. Okay. All right. What are we doing first? So we need to build the box. Mm -hmm. We need to build the box. And we need to do it in a way where you get to choose the parameters in which the tank can go off screen. OK. Yeah. So here's how we're going to do it. If you wouldn't mind, let's create an empty first. So if you right click in there, yep, and then you create eight empties, actually one up. Oh, you know what? Um, yeah, yeah, this is an empty. Sorry, I shouldn't say that. You're good. And let's rename it. And let's rename this to borders, something like that. Okay. And all this is gonna do is act as a folder. And inside of it, we uh. are, yeah, just right click in there and then there you go. 3D object and we'll put cube. Great. I say let's utilize the fact that we can see it right now. And then when we're done, we're going to uncheck mm. the mesh render. Actually, we'll probably just remove the mesh render component. But for okay. right now, we can see it. So, you know, why not? That's helpful. Yeah. Yeah. And go for broke, man. What do we want to name it? Oh, um, you know what I like to do in these? I like to do uh, like north wall, south wall, west wall, east wall. That's how I name it. But it's up to Oh, you. It's, it's OK. Gotcha. So we're going to make four of these. Yeah. And we're going to uh, utilize the transform up in the top to make it, you know, to stretch it out, to make it tall. So that's going to be Z and Y that we want to change, right? Ooh. Um, is that too big? Ah, really, you can't go too big. It really is no too big. It, it there's well, no... I mean, like, aren't we? No, there's no cost involved here. It's totally fine. You're absolutely no, safe. I just mean like how big the player area should be, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And then if you, if you click on the white box, the north wall, yeah, we can rotate it if you if you feel comfortable doing that. Rotate it on the uh, y axis, about thirty degrees. Give that a shot. Uh, let's go a little bit more. 60? Yeah, there we go. See how that's right smack dab like our camera? Oh. We could raise yeah. it up a little bit. That'd probably be a cleaner way to do it. So we're just matching up with the yeah. camera view yeah, down that'd here? Be, that'd be A OK. Sweet. OK, that makes sense. And I just make another one for each of these? Yeah, actually, if you right click North Wall, on the hierarchy, sorry, I should have specified. Oh, yeah, if you gotcha. right click on the hierarchy, and then there's a duplicate option. There you go. Yeah, you can unclick it or you can remove the component. It really doesn't matter. Uh, is that just mm -hmm. this? That's it. Okay. Boop, boop. okay. 
All right, now uh, the, the one thing I'm thinking of right now is that our tank, we want the tank to collide with those invisible walls and to stop, right. but we want the bullets to go through. So the way to do that is let's change, if you click on borders, your parent most object, and we're gonna change the layer. Right now it's not set to default, and we'll make a new one called walls. Okay. Now you made a new one, which is great, and now we'll assign it to the parent, and then that's going to ask you if you want to do all the children, and you do. You want to make them all that. Now let's go to the physics settings and make sure that we make it to where the bullets go through the wall. So if you go to edit, there you go, edit, and then we're going to go to project settings. And you're looking for a physics tab on the left. There you go. Now, let's make this a little bigger. Yeah, there you go. You were doing it. I'm sorry. Derp. There it is. On the super duper bottom. See that weird looking triangle thing? Yes. There you go. So we're looking for walls and we're looking for uh, anything bullet. I think there's two different bullets. There's uh, or DACA. There's player DACA and then there's enemy DACA. Yeah, we want to remove both of those. Okay. That's it. Uh, and then just close this? Yep. Okay. Cool. Let's test it out. Oh, no. <laughs> you can uncheck the box up in the top left for turret tower 03. There you go. Bam. All right. That yeah. should do it. Okay. So the bullets work. Oh, good. Yeah, there they go, off into the horizon. Great. And your tank? Uh oh. It's very slow. Yeah, we need to pick up that. Boop. Look at that. Nice. That was easy. Bonk. That one goes a little far. But it's probably fine. <laughs> we just beat up our poor little tank. It's like an old man tank. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. I'll get there. I'll get there. We might want to speed that up. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. All right, so you wanted to move the north wall down a little bit? Yeah. You just give it a nudge. There you go. Awesome. That's it. And, That's probably um, enough. Yeah. I think the quote-unquote west wall needed a little nudge, too. <laughs> Got it. All right, cool. So now we're gonna have the panhandler. <laughs> no one's gonna watch this anyways, except my mom. Panhandler is a person who stops people in the street and asks them for money. Yikes, bad joke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pan manager? Panner? Sure. Pancake. All right, I'm sorry. Add a new component. We're gonna add a script called the pan manager or whatever script you wanna call it. Uh, that's on the, there you go, yeah. We need a new script. Okay. We need to move a lot of stuff. Right Camera. now- Camera. Yeah the walls yeah that's pretty much it right now but we're later we're gonna move the spawn manager as well so that'll be three objects and when I say three objects I meant because the the wall is the parent wall you know if we move just the parent all the walls move with it mm. so that's pretty cool so we're gonna create an array of game objects yeah so right under line six actually you're gonna go on the other side of that brace there you go after the class declaration inside perfect We'll do public capital G game object. And here's how we make an array. We're gonna open and close, right immediately. Yeah, there you go. And close it. Yeah, perfect. And then uh, I'm no more sem no semicolon. We're gonna do space. And now we're gonna call it something. So in this one, it's gonna be um, moving objects. Now I noticed you shook your head. <laughs> Let me explain the, the logic here. The idea is it's public, so we're declaring it to where any class member can see it. Between but the, the 
the array is the type of game object or no never uh, mind i've already broken myself uh Please. yeah it's the data type so you know as opposed to integer the data mm -hmm. type here is game object and it's array of game objects so in its perspective it's coming from the capital g in game object all the way to the other end of the brace saying you've declared an array of game objects but this isn't enough in order for us to actually work we need to oh it is enough i'm sorry this is enough because we declared it as public so we can actually edit it in the inspector yeah yeah if you don't have it as public you need to declare it as a new array of game objects uh, at a specific okay. size but we're going to be doing that in the inspector okay one second yep i look like an angel <laughs> i mean i always thought that of you honestly i'm glad we have you called me a scraggly cat no my daughter called you a mangy cat Oh, I wonder where that came from. A four-year-old? She's very creative. She can think of all sorts of stuff by herself without the intervention of her father. That looks better. Yeah, it does. Let it focus. There we go. All right. We technically don't need a start function. It doesn't... Whoa. It doesn't need to, like, do anything. So, um, so on the update, we're going to make a big-ass for loop. So we'll say for, yeah, perfect. <laughs> Why do I invite you to these things? Uh, for that's a great question. Open parentheses int i equals zero, i uh, semicolon. Yeah, there you go. I is less than moving objects dot length capital L. No. Yes. Do you remember last time on the video, I was like, if it's a capital L, that means it's a method. It's a function. And if it's a lowercase L, that means it's a, well, well, this just broke that rule. What? This, this is actually C sharp. It's not uni. Uh, so it's, yeah. All right. Shaka bro. So <laughs> Shaka. It's like English, huh? <laughs> yeah, like, there's like we got all these rules and important things, but they don't really matter. <laughs> Actually, yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Uh, we'll open and close our braces. Did did I do I is I plus plus correct? Yeah, that's perfect. Slam it. Uh, no semicolon there. You were good, and then you were like, "Are we good?" Yeah, semicolon. <laughs> okay, cool. So, what do we need first? We need the um, we need the transform of the moving object. That would be good. Yeah, I got my notes here. So let's do that. Capital T transform, and then um, space. Actually, we're declaring the data type as transform, and then we'll call it. I don't know, my trans. I guess that makes you feel. Whatever. It's cool. Hey, how are we identified? No big deal. Uh, equals moving object moving objects i just don't want to own people that's what i was more i love it that's good so moving objects and then we want at index i so open your your square brace for arrays and then put i in the center there you go cool and close it up and then we're going to say um dot so delete the semicolon dot transform and then you can have the semicolon at the end and the reason why is that this is an array of game objects so we need to access the transform and then assign that to a variable we technically don't need to uh, but it just makes things it's a lot more legible you'll see so if we add a new line we need we need um so capital v vector three and then let's call this one right word instead of forward. Uh, <laughs> that's a word. It's cool. Uh, and then we're going to say my transform dot capital T transform capital D direction. You got it, your second one there as your option. There you go. Bam. We'll open the parentheses and do vector three with a capital V vector three dot uh, forward. And we'll close it up. 
So we've actually used this before, and a transform direction is it finds the direction of whatever game object is, and then mm -hmm. goes from there. Because if we do vector three dot forward, it's always in the world space, and this transforms it into the local space. Okay. And then we'll do a new line, and we're gonna do um, vector three again. We're gonna call it start position, or start pose. And then we'll say my transform dot position, lowercase p. Beautiful, great. And then vector three, a new line vector vector three. We'll call it uh, dest position. Yeah, just keep it dest pos, similar to what you have in your start. There you go. Equals my trans dot or my transform dot position plus um, plus vector three dot forward actually. And one second, I'm gonna re-examine my notes here. Yeah. You know what? We we don't need line twenty. My bad. This one? Yeah, we, we don't need it. You can scrap that up. We don't need the local position from the game object. We can just go right in the in the world, in the world's okay. perspective. Yeah. All right, cool. Semicolon. That simplifies things a lot. Great. So now we're just going to move it. So we have our starting position, which is where the game object is. Our destination mm -hmm. position is just vector three dot forward, which is so like one in that direction. Yeah, you yeah. got it. Yeah. So we're gonna lerp it. So vector three dot lerp. So we're gonna say moving. Uh, not quite yet. Sorry. Uh, moving objects dot at the at the ith position. So I said dot. I meant yeah. There you go. Dot transform. Actually, we have that right. No, we don't. Okay, never mind. Uh, dot position equals vector three dot lerp with a capital L. Linear interpolation. We're gonna do, <sighs> we have three arguments and which are the start position. So start pose, comma, dest pose and then the last one's capital T time dot delta time. And then let's do times 0 0.5. Let's slow it down a little bit. And then we can adjust that later and see if you like it or not. And then cast it as a float with an F. You love it. Semicolon. And we are done. That's it. That's what you call a big ass for loop. I mean, we removed a line. It was bigger. Okay. Yeah, I guess it wasn't that big. Cool, cool. That's it. That's it? Yeah, we're done. So let's save it. Let's go back into Unity. Now, our our array of game objects is, is non-existent. So we need to make it ah. existent. You can kind of see it over on the, it's collapsed. There you go, perfect. And we're gonna hit the plus button and we'll hit it twice for now. There you go. Yeah. Bada bing, bada boom. There you go. So just in case if people didn't see it, Luke put in the borders parent object as element O, zero, excuse me, and then uh, the main camera as element one. So it'll go through the game objects and tell each one to move over just a little bit. And I'll just keep doing that every single frame. Let's hit play and see what happens. I just need to, you know, make that a little bit bigger. So it don't fall off the side. Yeah. I'm digging on it. I'm feeling it. Oh, I, I was looking up here. I was like, uh oh, it's not working, but it is. We actually don't have, let's do this. Very let's unplay. Slowly. Let's make it look a little bit more interesting. So in your project tab on the bottom, and let's search for, let's see if you've got it under, yeah, let's make that big, that's good. 
And let's go not under war effects. So you can close that one. And let's try models. You see models there? Yeah, great. Now let's take the cow. We're going to take a cow and click and drag it up into our, uh, just the, not that, the actual, where you were before, that one. Perfect. Yeah, we'll drop that in there. A little cow bone. Anything else you want to drop in there? There's all sorts of stuff. So that looks weird. I regret that. Yeah, it's, it just looks weird because it's on the exact same. There you go. Yeah, dunes. That's great. Cool. Now we can actually see the camera kind of move a little bit more. How are you feeling on that speed? You want to pick it up? Oh, yeah. Make it faster? Yeah, I think the movement needs to be faster on the camera and the tank, let's probably. Yeah, let's do it right now. Okay. Can we, we should make that a public thing, shouldn't we? I like it. Let's do that. So... Bada bing boop boop boop. Um, did I do that right? You did. I'm so proud of you. I, I did? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, do we have a thing like that for the tank? I don't think we do. I don't know. Let's find out. Uh, it doesn't look like it. Yeah, you're right. But yeah, let's get into that script. Uh, Have you ever had these? This this is not sponsored by anything, but these Ben and Jerry's like cookie dough crumbles are. That sounds dangerous. They're real. Not a good idea. I mean, a good idea, but also not a good idea. I've been. My boss's son graduated, and they had like a ton of extra brownies and cookies and stuff, and she just dumped those off on me as yeah, well. She did. So now I'm like rolling in it. <laughs> I just finished my bag of Reese's covered pretzels, so it was perfect timing. Have you ever had those? Yeah, you were telling me about. It. No, I hadn't, but yeah, I don't think it gets much better than that. I mean. let's do so look look for the keyword uh yeah you keep doing what you're doing it's great and then when you're done look for the keyword um move so if you control f and mov um that'll get us pretty close to where we want where is it there it is player speed player speed what the dump control f that thing Two. Oh, no. oh, private. Huh? Ah, bibbity bobbity bacon. Make that public. Why would I do that? Uh, you know what? I think it's because we stole it from the Unity documentation. How dare they? All right. Can I just get rid of this? Um. Yes. Yes, you can. Yes, I feel yes, like you it's can. unneeded. All right. Let's make that player speed. Five. Yeah, there you go. And then I'm going to change this to 1.5. Cool. Because we had it at 0.5 before. We will need to up the bullet speeds too. But I feel like this is not so bad. I'm feeling it. It's kind of got like a, what's that video game from NES 1954? Is that right? No. It's like one of the first bullet hell airplane flight fighter games ever made. Well, um, oh, you know what I'm talking about. That's a good um, game. It's a year. I don't remember what year. But it would make oh, sense during, is it? during World oh, War II. Never mind. So that's not what you know, I was thinking about. 1946 or something. I guess I don't know. Fine. I just want to test the bullet speed Do out it. again because it... I want to test. That's better. Does the camera push you? Okay, that's bad right yeah but now i'm outside <laughs> I can't get oh back no in. let me in <laughs> all right mr luke i know that you were really excited about having the walls push the tank um it so is what it is the reason why and let me explain super quick let's say this is a wall right sure. and the wall is moving and this is our tank so when the wall moves it technically doesn't 
move. Uh, it doesn't use physics. When we tell it to vector 3.lerp, it actually goes from whatever current position it's at and then kind of warps away, if you will, and then warps back into the new position. So it, it's constantly being told you are in this position. Now relocate yourself to here. And so when it's continually relocating itself, even on like a really micro perspective, it'll overlap on the tank. Mm -hmm. It'll just keep doing that. So we're not really pushing it. In order to push our tank, we need to apply physics. We can apply a character controller onto this character controller dot move or rigid body dot add force. The problem with rigid body dot add force is that it really is like when you throw a baseball, it adds force and that force applies for a little bit and then uh, the force of gravity is applying down mm -hmm. on it as well. So it only lasts for so long. So you would need to keep that force going to make it consistent to follow the camera and it's easy to overdo it and it's easy to underdo it. And I don't really like physics uh, and we don't need physics in this game. So what do you say as an alternative? We just blow this thing up if it hits one of those walls. Death wall. You know, usually what I see in a video game is that the death walls, when you're following the camera, the death walls are pretty far back. You can still kind of see the residual explosion of the player, but they give you some some lead way. I know you that you're like Mr. Punishment with video games. Um, so it's up to you. Call me a masochist, but... So what we're going to do is... We need to detect when the player has actually collided with one of these. And then we already have a blow up, which is great. Same one when it gets shot. Mm hmm. Do we. So we should probably push the north and the east walls out pretty far, right? Mm, why is that? Because. I don't know. Those are different, though. Those aren't going to blow it up, right? They're not? I mean, it's up to you. We can make them different. Those the player can just like run into, but the back ones. Oh, right, because we don't need to shove them, so it's not a problem because we already couldn't drive through them. Mm -hmm. You got it. You got it See. because, and the reason why is that our character controller is actually moving using physics, and when it's actually moving into the wall, it stops. Well, the other way around, it doesn't because it's not actually moving. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so you might want to put them back, I think, if you want to, but it's up to you. Uh, okay, that's cool. Fine. All right, all right. We're there. We're there. You'll get panned back if you can't see him or whatever. Yeah, that's true. That is true. So now what we need to do is make a detection for when this actually Wait. hits. So let's actually do the explosion in a separate video. Right now we've we've gone long and we've also um it's a good amount of time to separate the video into sure. panning to um to blowing it up so we'll call this one good and we'll see you in the next video okay sounds good <laughs>